wealth advisors can add considerable value by embracing their role as a behavioral coach. And here to talk with me about that is Tony David Au, author of Goals-Based Investing. Tony, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. It's a pleasure. And I'm eager to learn, as I'm sure our viewers are, how advisors can embrace their role as a behavioral coach. Yeah, in fact, uh, Vanguard has actually done research on this and, and really trying to quantify the value of an advisor. And based on their research, half of the value add of an advisor is the ability to keep clients in the markets when things get difficult and coach them through all these emotional stimuli that we all speak about and just don't do a lot about. So to me, behavioral coach is kind of the uh, unappreciated value of a financial advisor. Hmm. And, and obviously, in order to become a behavioral coach, you need to understand and know what the behavioral biases are that your clients might have? Correct. Correct. And uh, is it worth reviewing what some of those major ones are that they need yeah. to know? Yeah. And I would say, you know, there, there's, there's a ton of research. You and I were talking earlier about Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. There's a ton of research out there. There's an awful lot that's been written about in publications and at conferences. So now we understand what these behavioral biases are, things like loss aversion or confirmation bias. But I think what, what has been lacking is then what do we do with the information? So if we know the clients feel twice as bad when they lose money as opposed to gaining money, and we know that loss aversion is a real behavioral sort of stimuli, especially when markets get volatile, what do we do about it? And I, I challenge advisors, we need to kind of embrace it. We need to understand these biases. They do exist. And, and by the way, financial advisors often have biases themselves. We need to understand the biases and kind of lean into them to say, okay, if clients are wired to feel pain when we get a shock to the market like we did uh, during COVID, we should be speaking to them about that. So they're, they're not dependent on that emotional stimuli, because unfortunately, that will often drive them out of the market. They'll be selling at the time they should be investing. Um, so, so I do think it's worthwhile to understand the behavioral biases, which are well documented, understand which sort of biases your individual clients respond to. Not all clients are wired the exact same way. Make sure that the advisor themselves doesn't impose their own personal views and own personal biases. And then really think about how can we condition clients so they actually don't react in an irrational fashion, but actually we condition them for the shocks that often exist in the market environment. Right. And, and you talk about um, the need to start well before those market shocks happen. Um, I'm thinking out loud of a risk tolerance questionnaire where maybe there's a near equivalent of a behavioral bias questionnaire that at least uh, identifies these biases and people are well aware of the ones that they have and the advisors are well aware as well because you documented them. Yeah, I think, I think uh, risk profiling questionnaires I think are valuable, but I think often not fully appreciated. And, and I think sometimes the advisors in such a rush to go through the questionnaire, it's click the box, click the box without really taking the time to understand how your client's really reacting to it. So when we ask them how they feel about shocks to the market, they're going to feel very differently in March 2000, 2020 or March 2000, right? March 2000, the market's going up. They're feeling good. They're willing to take on a lot of risk. Every client will say, I'm a long-term investor and I'm willing to take on risk. When you get a shock to the market, they feel very differently about it. So I think we need to periodically ask them, how do they feel about the markets? And in fact, remind them of when things were very difficult. So how did you feel in March, 2020, when the market was down? Should we do things different in your portfolio? Did you feel comfortable in your allocation? I think we should try to quantify how you feel. How would you feel if your portfolio were down 10%? Would you increase your allocation or decrease your allocation? But I think we need to personalize it. I think we need to revisit it periodically with clients. Because if it's just a rote sort of questionnaire, we often miss the cues and signals that clients will provide to us. Right. And you mentioned at the outset the notion of adding value to a client by becoming a behavioral coach. I think that's lost on many advisors, right? They think about adding alpha, asset allocation, tax efficiency, perhaps, which are all valuable, right? They all do add value to an advisor's uh, client's portfolio. But the degree to which behavioral coaching adds value might be lost on many advisors? It, I think it definitely is because it's, it's one of those softer skills 
Uh, but again, I cite this, this Vanguard research which suggests 300 basis points of overall value and 150 basis, half of it is coming from the behavioral coaching, which I think intuitively we can kind of pick up on if we keep clients for heading for the exits when they feel the most uncomfortable and keep them engaged when things are very difficult, you could see where that would add tremendous value over time. But I do think a lot of advisors kind of gloss over it and they focus on the tangible things. Did I outperform the market? Uh, did I help you achieve your retirement goals over the long run? But the softer skills I think are very important, especially when things get volatile. And again, I would submit we need to engage them in the beginning before we have those experiences. So we're conditioning them for when things do get difficult, they're not running for the exit. They're saying, oh, Bob, you actually spoke to me about market volatility. I know that we're going to have these shocks. Do you feel comfortable that we're still on path? So, so again, I, I think it's, it's a recurring sort of thing that we need to be consistent and reinforce it over time. Right. And one last question is, um, obviously, in order to gain these soft skills, there are places that they can go. Uh, any thoughts about that? Yeah, there are. There are. And again, I'm, I'm a big reader. So I love uh, Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. I, I think it's, a, it's an easy read because it's providing real life examples in it. Uh, I would say, you know, as you're aware, I've written multiple blogs on this. And then the Investment and Wealth Institute actually has a behavioral finance course that they've developed. Um, and I think they developed it largely because we have been hearing over and over again, there is a disconnect between the academic theory and the practical application of it. Um, and I'd, I'd also mention, you know, there are certainly people in the industry who have spent a lot of time studying it and they've developed white papers and blogs and, and shorter um, more pithy things that, that help you kind of think through it. But I, but I think for the advisor, one, they need to start by recognizing it's a skill they need to hone and it's a skill that should be embracing. And if they do, I think there's plenty of resources at their disposal. Mm. All right, Tony, we covered a lot of ground. Anything that we haven't mentioned that you want to make mention of or anything that you've already mentioned that you might want to Re-emphasize. No, just just on your last point, I, I do think this is something that advisors really need to lean into. This is a big part of their value proposition, especially when things get difficult, especially when there's uncertainty in the marketplace. We need to condition our clients now for the next set of shocks that will occur. We don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or the next day or next year, but we need to condition them so they stay engaged when things feel the worst. All right. So uh, last question, um, your forthcoming book, it will be published when and when can readers get it and where can they get it? Uh, it's it's available at the end of October and it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. And for bulk sales, you can get it through Porchlight. Ah, so my guest has been Tony David, uh, author of the forthcoming book, Goals-Based Investing. Tony, thanks ever so much. Thank you, Bob.